What is going on everybody? Today we're going to be working on Agent Orange. Uh, we got to run to the store real quick because we're going to be prepping this thing for the summer. We have some like upgrades and some maintenance stuff that needs to be done. Uh, but it's going to be a fun day so stay tuned. Can't sign, can't lie, while I can't buy has a lifeline, got a grand guy, so I can't fly. <clears throat> Take off, no me, I'm a spaceship. King Kong and top going ape shit. Eight ball rock solid, who I stay with. Talk about it, cause I got it out the basement. Tryna change my placement, face it, I'm gone. Hate it on the way and wait in my own own ten times another twenty tens, times a hundred, keep the pushing now. I'm running every track with no assumption, but I heard you assume, so I gotta prove now. Always on the move, I ain't about to lose now. Never had to pop the piss, and I was looking at my shoes. Now my competition, opposition, what I'm looking through. Funny how the kids who waited on me, never made it to my height. The delegation that you were sleeping. Okay, so back from the auto parts store, and we have a set of eight brand new Motorcraft plugs, and I got my uh, socket for spark plugs and my gapping tool. So I'm going to pull the plugs out one by one, and I just want to hose um, each cylinder with a little bit of WD 40 or some fogging oil. <coughs> So, man, this spark plug boot is stubborn. I do not remember this engine bay being this tight and tricky to work in. Um, it's not horrible, but it's definitely giving me some struggles. I think the secret is we're gonna have to add an extension in with, or a swivel socket in with the extension so I can get in there. Yeah, this thing is harder to get out than I ever remember. I don't ever remember it being this. Oh, you know what? I think I think I know what the trick is. I gotta take this upper intake plenum off or the snorkel. All right, manage to get plug one out. Um, it's a little oily. It doesn't look too bad, but it could be better. Um, it actually looks pretty good, but we're gonna go change them out anyways because they do look a little tired. So all I'm gonna do is take WD-40 and I'm gonna spray it in 
each of the cylinders as I take the spark plugs out because even though it'll probably be fine, it has been sitting all winter, so I just want to give the cylinders a little bit of something to free, you know, just make sure they're not so dry and make sure they're not so, you know, uh, harsh on startup. I am going to spin the motor without the coil wire on um, just to make sure that it's uh, the oil's primed, but I still want to give it a little bit extra something since I am doing the spark plugs anyways. Alright, so a little trick, and yes, this is a spark plug shoved to cap the EVAP hose, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I got this back spark plug out on the passenger side, but I could not for the life of me get the can of WD-40. Uh, I could not for the life of me get the can of WD-40 and the hose in the cylinder hole. So what I did, a little trick, is I took this like rubber hose and I just slid it down into where the spark plug would go. All I'm gonna do is take the straw, and you don't need a lot. I don't wanna water lock the motor or nothing, but, and <clears throat> that'll all flow down into the cylinder and we'll all be good. And now I can throw the new plug in. As much as I loved having like the ambiance of having the natural light come in, I had to turn on the heater. So hopefully it'll get a little bit warmer in here, but I got the first bank of the motor done. I got the passenger side done. So we're moving on to the um, moving on to the driver's side. Um, the other thing, just a quick reminder when you're do spray like WD-40 in the cylinders or fogging oil. You don't need to just like hose it in there and like, you know, water lock the motor. Like you don't need to just flood the each cylinder with that stuff. You just need like a little bit to just kind of like, you know, uh, get some moisture in the cylinders, get some lubricant in there so it's not like just bone dry. But like, you don't exactly want to just be keep spraying it uh, a ton in there. The other thing, um, when, you gap your plugs with these coins. Um, when you get the spark plug to where it's supposed to be, you don't want to just like, you don't want it to be loose at the point on the coin. You want it to have a little bit of tension. You want it to kind of drag between the ground strap and the electrode uh, right where it is. So in this particular car, my gap is 0.055. You want you don't want it to be like super tight, but you don't want it to be like you know where it can just like slide in and out with no friction. You want to kind of ride that line. Okay, so batteries in. However, I don't know how easy that is to see, but I'm gonna need a new ground strap eventually because this thing's cracking pretty bad. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the coil wire so I can prime this thing and like get the motor turning over and get it primed. Um, there's a trick you can do with these Mustangs where if you put your foot with the car off, put your foot f flat to the floor on the gas, turn the key, the car to start it, the car will crank, but it won't start. I don't know if it cuts fuel or ignition, but that's what it does. It'll turn the motor over, but it won't start. Um, I'm not going to do that trick for a very specific reason because... Last spring when I was getting this thing out of storage, I did that and right away the car fired up and my foot was completely to the floor and it just fired up full throttle and revved up to like three grand after sitting for like four months. So I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to do the safe way and pull the coil wire off and actually, you know, prime this thing the correct way. Also. Before I start this, I should probably check the oil. We got plenty of oil. Let's see, where's my volt gauge at? Hopefully it's enough. But this oil pressure gauge is what I'm concerned on. I know it's got oil pressure and it'll do that, but I want to wait for it to build up if it'll focus. Well, it 
hasn't come up yet, which is odd. Thought it would by now. There it goes. It's got plenty of oil in it. I knew it would go eventually. And once you fire it up, it builds it pretty quick. But... Alright. Well, it cranks really good, which I'm happy about. I'm going to give it one more turn, and then we'll put the coil wire back on. We'll fire it up. Money. It's gonna take a second to learn how to idle. And she dies. Let's see, we got good oil pressure. I'm just gonna keep my foot on the gas just to let it warm up. But I'm gonna pull this out just so it's not idling in the garage, smoking it up. point but I want it to be a little bit higher just so any air that's in the system might try and like gravitate forward but I'm gonna watch for something else when it's running is something a little concerning is where's the bottom of the water pump uh, right there there's like a little spot of moisture right there what you're looking at right there is the very bottom of the water pump there's a little bit of moisture there and that don't make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside and so I'm wondering if this whole overheating issue isn't just an air bubble it's like a leak or something so I'm gonna try and dry that off and I'm gonna try uh, um, like watching that as the car is just like running and whatnot now in making the video you just saw I turned the camera off and I realized something um, if I can get my finger in here, what you're looking at right there is the timing cover. And what that bolt right there is actually threaded into the back of the water pump, and it's actually holding. There's like that thin metal plate that you can see there, it's kind of goldish in color. That bolt is holding that metal plate onto the back of the water pump. Now it's really hard to like kind of see, but that head of that bolt is actually butted up against the front of the timing cover. So I think that's part of my issue is the water pump isn't like laying perfectly flat and I don't know if I, that being pressed up against the timing cover either like cracked or bent the water pump because it's there's no gap there it's like tight and I think what's happening is that metal plate because there's coolant between that metal plate and the water pump there's not any that I know of between actually no I take that back there is coolant between that plate and the timing cover or at least I'm pretty positive um Actually, no, now that I remember, there's coolant passes through the timing cover, but it's not like between the plate. But anyways, I think that plate is not allowed to sit as flat as it can. Okay, so I've been sitting here with this thing idling for like an hour and a half now with no luck. Um, I talked to one of my buddies and he said there's probably an air bubble trapped by the coolant temp sensor. Um, and he's probably right on that, but we'll see. The other idea that someone mentioned is the thermostat's not functioning properly, but I doubt that's it. It's a newer thermostat, and I wasn't having problems with it before I changed out the radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the temp sensor real quick. I shut the motor off. I'm going to pull the temp sensor, let it let any air out, and then throw it back in, and then we'll see how we're sitting. Uh, there we go. 
harness out of the way. It's probably like a 7 8 um, It'll take a socket. I gotta go find a socket that'll work with it. Oh, that's definitely not it. That's 3 quarter or no, 13 16 That's definitely not it. That was 7 8 That's not deep enough. Cool. Oh, you know what? I can't even see if it works because you feel me? I can't. This one won't even fit because there's like a lip inside the deep socket, so I can't even tell. What about the other one we found? Uh, we can go check that one. <laughs> My finger was in the way. <laughs> yeah. I think. Use those muscles. This thing's probably never been taken out in the 30 years this car's. Actually, no, more like 33 years this car's been alive. This car's been on the road. I hate it when people say, like, this car's been a long time, this car's been alive, or whatever. Okay, boomer. <laughs> yeah. There's no coolant right there. Um, okay. So, apparently, there is a huge air bubble that's in there. It's so dry, actually, that the tip on the temp gauge is, like, completely dry. I didn't think it would be that bad. I'm going to pull the plug on here and see if it, like, will fill up at all. Oh, yep. Okay, so, this and thread it back in. Plug that. All right, so I pulled it. And I let it, um, I pulled the plunger and I let it fill up and then I just threaded this back in. <clears throat> so, threaded in for the most part. And now I have some coolant in the valley of the motor, but that's okay. Not in the valley, on the upper intake, but same thing. all it needs all right so i thought after pulling that plug it would make the cooling system a lot more effective and it would actually it would be gone but that's not the case the uh car is still having overheating problems so i'm really at a loss for what to do um i think i was on the right track with pulling the temp sensor because it was dry um and i don't know if i should just keep driving around or what right now we're, we're just photographing the car um and right as we stopped and i went to shut my headlights off the headlight switches acting up so i can only shut off my headlights not the parking lights but um we're I'm just gonna keep driving around, see what happens. Um, I might be able to pull the temp sensor again, but I don't want to just keep pulling it out all the time. And so we'll see. I think I don't think the motor's gonna overheat. I think the temp sensor is just having a problem. So I don't know. I don't think the thermostat's having a problem, but I'm just gonna keep chipping away at stuff, and we'll see what happens. But right now, we're just gonna drive it around and photograph it more. Okay, so. <clears throat> It's the end of the weekend, I pulled the Mustang in the garage. I didn't get nearly as much done as I thought I would or I was hoping to, but the car's in the garage, I gotta get the battery out and go throw it down in the basement so that way um, it's not sitting out in the cold and draining. But I actually I could probably just leave it in the car at this point, but I'm gonna go throw it inside just to be careful. Um, but So I'm gonna go throw it inside just to be careful. But I don't know how I'm going to do things different next time because, like, 
I just didn't get as much done and I don't want to like keep making the trip up trip uh, to where this thing is stored just to not get as much stuff done but I'm gonna keep persevering um this car is coming along good it's come a long way since I've owned it this car is very special to me and I'm never going to like quit or stop until this thing is like a beautiful street car and where I want it